Hey there, and welcome to the channel. I'm Brian, and in today's video, we're going to be working on uh, Hashboard 003 again. Now, if you didn't know, for every board uh, that I make a video of, there's a playlist. So if you check the playlist for the channel, you can find all the videos for board 003. And they're in chronological order in the, in the playlist. So let me give you a quick recap of this board and what happened with it. Uh, let, me get my, let me get my face out of the way real quick. So what happened in, with this board is that in the last video, I had replaced these two chips, 42 and 43. And the problem after replacing these is I still got stuck here at 42. The tester just wouldn't go farther. So uh, there were some comments and I had some ideas. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get into trying to fix this board some more. First things first, when you're doing a test, is you need to actually put the you need to actually put the board on the fan. So I've got it on the fan. Let's put it into that mode and turn on the power supply. Just want to verify that, in fact, we still have 42 chips. Okay, and there you go. We do have 42 chips. Let me get my glasses on because I can't. I can't see to work on these boards without my glasses. All right, so what we're looking at here is whether or not it could be this chip right here, 41, um, because I replaced these chips multiple times. We can check the voltage and find out that we are indeed. So that is clock. Clock's where it's supposed to be. CI is where it's supposed to be. RO's good. Uh, NSRT is good, or reset is good. And BI should be between 0 and uh, 0 0.2. So it's good. All right. And if I check the next one down here, we see the same. Zero, one, seven. See, now that's the interesting thing is we drop. So, so RO is good there, right? But when we go to the other side, we drop voltage. So there's something going on there. It really does look like it's chip 42. All right, well, I said I wasn't, I was gonna replace chip 41, but I think I'm gonna replace chip 42 one more time. Uh, hey, let's do this. Let's get under the microscope real quick. So the solder job looks fine on, on uh, this chip. Or I've taken it on and off enough times. So what I'm looking for now is I'm just checking to see. Okay, everything looks good on that side there. Just doing a visual inspection. And 43 looks good as well. Or does it? What I'm, what I'm concerned about, I just don't think 43 may not be properly seated compared to 42. It just doesn't quite look quite right. Looks like the chip may be a little twisted. So what I'm going to do before I actually reflow or remove 42, let's, re let's go ahead and replace chip 43. Or I'm sorry, not replace. Let's reflow chip 43. So we're going to work on this chip right there, 43. I'll hang it all the way out there. Push my keyboard in. 
set my air station to uh, 425 and pull in the microscope. Yeah, I just want to see if I can get that ship to straighten up just a little bit. Cause I think it's a little bit on the low side. All right, we'll go to microscope cam for this. All right, it's a little warm, but I want to go ahead and give it a quick test, just see if that helped. Hmm. I guess not. But let's check the voltage. Okay, just get to the ground or re ground reference for this domains right here. Check. Oh, good. 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 Same. So I don't think it's. Hmm. That is interesting. Looks like we could have a combination of problems, right? So we drop 42 drops, 43 drops. But once we get back to 44, we're good. That, that's, that's actually why I took these two chips out. Chip 43 out one more time. I just don't think that chip 41 is the problem because all the voltages look good on it. So let's go ahead and take chip 43 out, right? Because it's zero voltage on this side, it's low voltage on this side, so there could be something wrong with the chip. By the way, there is a new open source project called BitAx, or I think BitAx is how, how you pronounce it. And the cool part about BitX is that it uh, it takes these 1397 chips and you can run one on a printed circuit board. What if you were to get a socket for the 1397 and adjust the circuit board because they give you they give you plans for the circuit board. So what if you were to get the plans for the circuit board you could modify the circuit board to uh, fit the socket. Do you, do you follow me? Do you see where I'm going with this? Um, then you could actually take a chip like this one, right? Is it any good? I wonder. Well, take it off the board, let it cool off, put it in that socket, and, and test it. It's a, it's a one-chip miner. Yeah. As soon as I get my socket, which has been ordered, as soon as I get it in and I get the board ordered uh, and printed and ordered, uh, we'll build one of those on, we'll build one of those on camera. All right, let's see if this is going to work. Zero? Well, obviously it's not quite zero because we see the, you see right up there, right? You see the draw, so definitely not zero, folks. We've got 30. 
Got 40. We don't have 50. Forty one, forty two, nope. Okay, we're going to shut that down. I'm going to just dial the Voltage down eighteen point five ish. There we go. That'll help the board to run a little bit cooler. So that's interesting. I have taken multiple chips on and off. And we keep having problems right there. I wonder if the real problem isn't right here on this side. Let's check. Let's check uh, the voltage one more time. Okay. No oh, heck. At least with the last chip, we had Am I measuring it right. Yeah. Yep. Nope. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and take off both 43 and 44. Why am I taking off 44? Because if I test with my voltage, what I see... On this side, I get 1.7. On that side, I get nothing. In that side, I get nothing. So I feel like there's probably a direct short into this. Now, the question could be, I wonder if you could do this. I've never tried this before. It may just send big sparks. Let's see. That would just be too easy, wouldn't it? So I completely jump her down, jump her across. There's 41. There's 42. So does that mean you can jump across a chip? But no, you can get to the next one because, yeah, so you're get, there's a voltage potential here. That's why it works. Sadly, though, just passing the RO over won't let you get past the chips. Okay, 43, 44, take them out.
that will take a while to cool off. Whew. All right, here we go. Yay! Yes, sir. Ha! Oh man. Not done yet, though. Ah. Uh -huh. You know what we got to do next, right? Uh, first, I got to adjust my little volt amp camera. There you go. What's next? We have to do the temperature sensor. This is where it was screwing up before anyway. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Hmm. All right, number two is reading no temp. Number two is that guy right there. So what do you do? Well, since everything else is stable on the testing, the logic dictates you replace that chip. So let's do that. Okay, so it feels like it's cooled off pretty good. We got the fans going. Let's check the chips. 65, we're good to go. Let's see if we can get our temp sense now. Damn. Okay, so we replace the chip. We get no reading. That could be a faulty sensor. Hmm. Okay. Let's turn it over. Now, just so we can keep up, we're we're going to be doing this chip right here, right? So the sensor for this one is right there. Let me get, let me turn this off. There's the temperature sensor. All right, so what we need to check then, so I measured the voltage here and we had voltage across there. So let's check between pins one and six. So this is one, two, three, four, five will be on the corner. You'll see it in a second and six so one and six all right let me get the microscope going so pin one on this is right here and then counts around two three four five six so six will be right there all right let's run Let's go ahead and light it up. Okay, I don't have any temps. All right, I'm going to put that one there. All right, so I got 1.7 volts. So that part's good. Now two and three should be Hmm. That's interesting. 
2 and 3 are supposed to be the voltage. But if you notice, we don't have anything. Now why is that? Goes to here. I don't have anything there. I don't have anything across there. Interesting. All right, let's stop that. According to my spreadsheet, or I'm sorry, according to the, I'll show you real quick. According to there, if I look between pins two and three, right, they go to the resistors um, uh, R565 and R568, uh, and they go through 100 ohm resistors. So, let's take a look back at my microscope. Put this thing in resistance mode. I'll give you that. Ninety nine ohms. Ninety nine ohms. Okay, so on the other side here, it's very messy. There's a point there. Let's see if I can clean that up. All right, so we can see it here. So this this resistor comes through and goes to this pass through, and then this resistor here goes to this pass through here. So I'm going to go ahead and and take this off and uh, see if I've got another one of these. We'll replace it. All right, so I have these temp sensors. Probably ought to order a couple more, although typically I don't lose these, but here we go. These, but let's go ahead and get it out. That little dot right there indicates the number one pin. Okay. Mm, I'm not really happy. solder these much so I'm not as good with these okay let's add some more solder Okay, so that's pin five, that's pin six, this is pin seven. Now, pin seven doesn't go anywhere. All right. Eight and nine are some control, known as SCL and SDA. Pin four also doesn't go anywhere, so we don't care about pin four and we don't care about pin seven. Cool. Put the air cooler back on. 
Okay. Kind of exciting. Okay, we're cool enough. Let's check our our chips. 65 chips, that's good. Come on, man. Let's see the temp sense. Yes! So, what that tells me, this right here, this little bitty chip, is no good. Into the garbage it goes. Now, that also tells me that this chip that I pulled... This chip that I pulled probably is okay. Let me get a heat sink for this board because I don't have one handy. Let me get a heat sink for this board and I'll get it mounted and then we'll get it we'll get it into a tester and find out how it works. But this is actually like super positive news. This board may have been brought back to life. Keep in mind, this is a zero ASIC board. This is the uh, single piece heat sink. These were the original heat sinks that I bought uh, to do repairs and upgrades. And I've really noticed that there is some benefits to the split. So what I did, I just I looked at the right spots and I, I split it. I took a hacksaw and I split it into these two spots right here. That way everything should be well clamped. And it just works, right? So you can set this one there, you set this one there. And it's kind of self-correcting. You're not going to put the wrong one on the wrong spot. So there you go, just like that. So let me go ahead and put uh, heat sink grease on these things, and we will I'll get them mount mounted. Oh, I also did this. I also said that's chip, or that's 11. So it just helps me to know. Kind of an alignment thing. Pretty handy. All right. Okay. It looks like we've got the board back together. The spacing is nice. Um, yeah, good. So I'll heat this thing up. Let's get uh, let's get power on it. Get it on the tester. Sixty-five chips. Very good. All right. Go ahead and turn this voltage up to. Up close to 21. There we go. We're going to run the temperature test. I want to heat that board up. All right, look at that. Four temperatures, all reading good. 44 for uh, number two. Yeah, there we go. Number two is 44. 45, this has gone to 50, 51. 45 okay and then on up there 11 is 45 on the on the chip and then a 3 a 51 is uh, 44 2 is now 48 51 53 all right Let's give that that screw right there is going to be the oh sorry this screw right here is going to be the closest one to, to chip uh, 55. Okay. Good. All right, I'm going to turn the fan down. I'm just going to let it warm up. Just let it get nice and toasty. Then I'll tighten the screws down. Next step after that, put it in the miner. All right, 
we're going to go ahead now and turn it off. It's getting nice and toasty. Give the screws a nice little just make sure that all the screws are nice and tight while it's warm. Board's ready to go. Let me get it off and put it into a miner and I'll be right back. All right, so new day, uh, same problem. So the board's back out of the miner, um, and it failed with with uh, temperature sense problems. Uh, chip number fifteen is just overheating, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that because I, I I need need to get it working right. So I guess we'll pull chip fifteen. But that raises the the interesting thing. So chip 15 looks good from a performance standpoint, right? But look at chip 16, which is its neighboring chip. Because you got to remember. There we go. You got to remember the flow, right? The flow, the signal flow. Oh, this is not going to work because so it goes it goes this way. And technically, it the the chips are reversed. They go back this way, then they go like this and like this. So technically, sixteen is right next to fifteen. That sounded better in my head than when I tried to explain it just now. But basically, five and six are together, and then, um, and so then ten and one are together, and then fifteen and sixteen. Our neighbors to each other. So I think while I'm at it, uh, since my red chips are 16, 28, and 48, these are the red chips. Uh, and then the rest of them are yellow chips. And this is only running at 400 megahertz. So I think while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and replace chip 16. So I'll take 15 out and 16 out at the same time. Okay, we got 65 chips. That's good. We'll do a quick temp check. Make sure that we have good temperature readings again. Okay. Uh, number two is, is good. Everything's fine. Now, it is interesting that the PCB reading is warm, but that's probably due to the, the 33. Um, on the on chip 15 is probably related to uh the heat on the board residual heat okay yep one and two are heating up pretty good all right let's go ahead and shut that down let me get this reassembled and i'll get it back in the miner for testing all right not the best view but Here's uh, another shot or another compilation. And uh, so let's just see how it goes together. Kind of what I do. So, as you can see here, I got, I was able to get it all the way to 575 uh, megahertz and 60, uh, all 65 chips. 
And notice where the temperature stabilized out. It was 81 and 75 on 10 cents 2 and 4. So that's chips 15 and 55. Now, there was something interesting I did to this miner that really made the difference. Um, it would actually run at 575 as long as there were two other blank cards. Okay, when I say blank cards, I mean disabled cards. So I had, I had uh, cards that had the heat sinks on, so they would have the airflow properties correct. Um, and that would give me the ability to get this to 575. Now, if card two or three were missing, then the airflow wasn't right, and we would get an overheating problem. Now, that uh, chip 28 and 48 were consistently a problematic chip, right? So I'm going to go ahead and replace those while I've got it out on, uh, on the bench. And then I'll run one last test and I'll get this into the miner on the farm, especially since the board that we fixed the other day, uh, it has temperature sense problems. Ugh. I just have to remind myself, all of these boards I'm fixing, or except for the ones that are the 102, 101, and 103 boards, all the other boards are no-fix boards. That's right. Boards that other repair shops said couldn't be fixed. So it's a fun challenge. All right, let me go fix 28 and 48, and then we'll get this back in the miner. I'll report on how that works out. Okay, so final test. Um, I, I learned quite a bit about the board. Um, I was worried that when I was taking things all apart on the board that I had a problem with, uh, let's see, this would be temp sense 4, which is about right here. So on the back side, it's, it's 55, right? So it's chip 55. So I was getting problems on the tester that this chip was warming up real fast. But once I put the heat sink back on, it worked fine. Uh, so as you can see right up there, uh, we got the board running at 575 megahertz, which is really good. Uh, only one of my miners actually runs above that. And 18.7 uh, volts. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let me turn this screen off and flip over to this. Wow, that's a lot of red. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so 65 chips, 575 megahertz. Uh, temperatures are good, but that voltage at 18.7, that causes a lot of red uh, chips. So a lot of chips drop out. It just, this board will not run at that low. And it may be due to the fact that right down here, there's a sticker that says L6. This is the first L6 board I've ever had. Normally, my boards say L2 or L3. This one says L6. So I didn't even know there was a level 6 board. Uh, but it also, this other sticker on here tells me it's a Bin 2 board. So I don't know. Um, but 18.7 volts does not run well on this at all. So I rebooted the miner. And I set the temperature lower. And as you can see from this screen, right over there, look, 47 and 14 are really kind of weak chips. They're red chips. Uh, there are a few other weak chips. Um, with the case of the domain 46 through 50, I'm inclined to believe that that is related to that 47 chip. I'm not going to take these, this board back apart. I'm going to get this off into the miner. Uh, I'm all out of prepped chips, so I'm going to spend the next day or so prepping chips. I've got a lot of chips that uh, I've tested already, and I just need to do solder work. So I'm going to get those prepped up, and this guy right here is going in the miner. So for now, board 003 is done. Thanks for watching. I know this was a longer video. I hope there was some useful information in here, and you took something out of this. In that you can use in your own farm.